we did it. We already did a show, Brian, about the movies that we're anticipating for 2022. Now we want to jump into the shows. And Brian, I had a tough time coming up with my top 10 because there's a lot of good stuff coming out. And uh, some are more anticipated than others. Some are more excited than others. Um, and that's what obviously I boiled it down to, and I'm sure you did too. Um, but there are other stuff that we want to see as well, right? Um, if I had to do an honorable mention, it would probably be a lot. I, I'll just use one. So before you start, I want to yes. throw two two conditions on this. So one okay. is the difference between TV and movies. Obviously, well, in a lot of ways, there's a lot more shows that are already established where there's new seasons coming back. And so there's a ton of shows that are great shows that a lot of people watch that would have yeah. high on the list that like you and I, that I don't watch or you don't watch. Yeah, so yeah. like something like Stranger Things, Ozark, Westworld, like I'm not going to dispute the cultural significance of those shows or like the popularity of those shows. I don't watch them. So like to me, they're not on my list, but I'm sure for other people, they'd be like number one or two. And that's fine because they're dedicated. Yeah. So that's condition number one is if you don't hear some really high brand show, like Bridgerton season two, not <laughs> on my list. Okay. <laughs> but it's going to be on a lot of people's lists. Yeah, yeah, All definitely. Right? Yeah, so yeah. if you don't hear those shows, I think that's the re main reason why is it's just for us, it's just not really a thing. The second one is a lot of release dates are more up in the air for these mm -hmm. and for the movies, right? The movie calendar, at least for the time being, is mostly set. So when we go through our list, I have a couple that are question marks. So I have three shows in particular that one I have on the list because I thought it, I think it's coming out this year, but I'm not sure. The other two are just have, we haven't heard. So it'd be one of those where it's like, if I knew they were coming in 2022, I would probably have them on the list. But since we've mm -hmm. had no confirmation, I, I just want to give them honorable mention because they'll be on yeah, the 2023 yeah. list. Mm -hmm. So we're doing our best with release dates, but a lot of these are TBD. To be fair, so I try to stick to series where we knew there was a release date sometime in calendar 2020. And yeah, and let me know if for, for some of the ones that I choose, aren't those dates are TBDs because I, I wasn't sure of it. I just picked out some of the names. I think I looked at a list um, and I chose from that list yeah, that, I, that I know uh, are coming out for 2022. So my honorable mention... Um, Ooh, uh, my, my honorable mention is The Sandman. Ooh, interesting. Okay. The reason why is because I never really got into it. And people sing its praises when they talk about The Sandman. And I started listening to the audio book. And I just couldn't get into it. Um, I think I tried reading it and I, and I just got distracted. I couldn't get, it didn't hold my attention, but people still, still speak highly of it. I think that it didn't win any uh, awards or something like that. I think it has. Yeah. And then people like, uh, was it Neil Gaiman? The guy that's like, yes, 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 yes. people really like, like American gods, right? That was really popular for a while. Okay. So, as yeah. So people are into this stuff. So that's, that's what, that's why I'm, I'm really looking forward to actually seeing this. And, 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 and I think they're, went out of their way to really make sure that they are, are, are um you know they, they they honor the book the the story so um yeah that's my honorable mention my number 10 hang on can i can i throw in my like ones oh, that sure. didn't make the list sure, that sure, sure. you you have a few yeah i got i got a okay. couple so okay. that, that are close i mean just ones that it, that i watch or that are i'm fans of but um most of which are close to what we cover so okay. things that I did not make my list, but at least thought about them. Um, mm -hmm. Thought about the Green Lantern series. I don't trust it enough with the Lanty running it. Well, I don't I trust it. Think about it. You know, like if it honestly, like if it was a different showrunner with a little more cred, mm -hmm. a serious track record in this in in the space, I'd be more excited. But I thought about it, and I was like, ah, can't get. That. I haven't seen a trailer. Can't get that. Peacemaker didn't make my list. 
I don't know if it made your list. Didn't make my list. I'm sorry. I'm a little James gunned out. Been watching the commercials. I, you know, I'm, I have all due respect to John Cena. I can't get there on this show. Like, I'll watch it because we got to yeah. talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not like geeked out to see the continuation of Peacemaker. So Peacemaker didn't make the list. Um, getting a little warmer with the next three. So I'm, I'm a big fan of The Crown. I thought The Crown season four was great. I'm looking forward. They had a great cast for season five as they bring it mm-hmm. forward. We just sang in the era. Um, so that one is just sort of out there for me, but I, I'm looking forward to it. Picard season two. I'm very much looking forward to this. I'm definitely a Trekkie and I love Next Generation. And, uh, you know, Patrick Stewart still has it. You know, I would yeah. say he doesn't quite have like the 105 mile an hour fastball, but he's got like a 94 mile an hour fastball in there. And, and I thought season one showed promise, especially as the, the season went on. So I got that one on my list. That's definitely coming this year. Q. Always been a big fan. John Nancy does a great job, so they're bringing him. In. So that one's also on the list. Uh, Miss Marvel didn't make my list, even though I had I it super, super high. <laughs> I didn't. It, I, I'm using this opportunity to downgrade Miss Marvel in my uh, in my <laughs> rankings. It did not make my list. Uh, I am excited. I do want to see it, but it's yeah. not in the top ten. Here are my two. Sh- here are my two that would be in the top ten for sure, but. I don't have a release date for 2022, so I put it, I didn't. Count. The one is okay. Gotham PD. Uh, yes. I've, I've seen a conflicting yes. report. I've seen a report that it is coming in 2022. I've seen a report that is not coming in 2022. But the Matt Reeves Gotham series would be on the list. But oh yes, yes, yes definitely. The second one is Invincible season two. There's been nothing. I went looking for this other than Stephen Yoon saying that they had worked on it. Yeah. There's nothing from Amazon as to when this was coming. And like this, it was a first quarter show. It, so like in theory, it should be around now. But we yeah, haven't yeah. seen it. And, but they promoted the heck out of season one. We haven't seen yeah. a trailer. So yeah. I put that to the side as like, that would definitely be on the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got nothing on it. So those two are the ones that I couldn't really count for this year. So, all right, now we're into the 10. So go ahead. All right. Um, I got since you got you had a few. I'm gonna mention another honorable mention. Yeah, go um, for it. House of Dragon. That's actually on my list. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge Game of Thrones fan, but I, I, I did watch the show, and every time I watched it, I'm, it wasn't like I was like, I gotta see it, I gotta see it. But my wife really loved it, and I think the show was fantastic as well. But I just wasn't that, that crazy over it. Um, but. Certainly, obviously, the, one of them, one of the shows that is on my list, they're looking to, you know, stay, uh, I guess, in the, in, the, in, the, in the race in terms of high production shows. So um, House of Dragon, um, so far, the what's the guy that wrote it? George, George Martin. That's the author. I mean, the author from Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, George, I think George I think he, I think he's seen some some of it, or yeah, or, or, yeah he likes he's it. like yeah, yeah. So that's like, so it's, it puts it in the because I was getting like I don't want to see a prequel, you know. I want to see what go, you know what I'm saying. I want to. I, I don't. I'm not. Too, I'm not a fan of the prequel, you know. I'm never initially a fan until it comes out, and if it's dope, it's dope. But if it isn't, it's like you know, it was whatever. Um. So yeah, that made my um uh honorable mention. My number 10, speaking of the sort of the same uh, Lord of the Rings, Amazon. That's my number 10. Okay. Um, listen, I did Game of Thrones come out after um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy came out? It did, yeah. So I think that sparked something or spawned a, a new sort of uh, uh thought process of creating some of these shows or bringing back some of these shows because they were dead, whatever the case may be, but it certainly started something. And, and the result of that, I think was a, a game of Thrones. And from what it looks like, it looks like it's going to be the cinematography is going to be like amazing. You're going to see a lot of beautiful stuff. So, and it's going to be an exploration of a whole brand new uh, time in that world that I'm very much interested in seeing. So that's on my list. 10. What time? <laughs> <laughs> so my number 10 is also kind of a question mark, but like, I, 
I left it on here because I wasn't sure, but I was like, all right, I got these three question marks. I'll put one of them on here. It's Batman Cape Crusader. It would be higher if I knew for sure where it was going to be coming yeah. out. But there are reports that might be coming this year. Um, and obviously we got the word that Ed Brubaker is joining forces with Bruce Tim as, you know, in, in the writer's room and the show running room for this. And I mean, I just think if you, if you, if you love this genre, the next two years we'll revisit two of the greatest animated shows that have ever been made, right? This one and then X, X-Men 97 next year. Um, but I'm just excited to see what they can do with no limitations, you know, with, with bigger budget, no consideration for rating. They can go as adult or Dark. as family as they want. Yeah. And, you know, I just think now you've got a creditable, a big name writer who's been immersed in the DC universe for the last 10 years to kind of help modernize what they want to do with this. It sounds like they have a clear vision in the room for where they want to take this. I can't wait to see it. As I said, my only caveat as to why I don't have it higher is I'm not totally sure it's coming in 2022. So that's why I just sort of put it at the number 10 as, hey, I'm flag it. Because if it is coming, we're yeah, going to yeah. be we're going to be there like <laughs> the second it gets dropped every every week or however they do it. So mm-hmm. I think Cape Crusader is my, my number 10. Yeah, I, I would have loved, I would love to be in the writer's room. Hey, listen, just let me sit there, man. I won't say nothing. <laughs> I promise you I won't say nothing. I just want to be there just listening to it how you guys think about this. And I hope they do some sort of special or whatever or behind the scenes sort of situation so we can see the process of creating that show because that to me is just uh, an amazing thing happening. And uh, if it came out today, it would have definitely made my list, but it wasn't on, it wasn't on nobody's list of most anticipated or, yeah, anticipated no. or shows. Yeah, uh, You know, I, I didn't see it anywhere, so I didn't think about it. But my number nine, and bear with me, guys. And the reason why I'm choosing this is because I'm looking forward to seeing my man, Sebastian Stan, you know, get nominated for an Emmy. And that is Pam and Tommy. (laughs) I want to see this. This is going to be a performance. (laughs) This is going to be a performance. Everybody was like, during that time when that stuff happened with them, uh, everybody was just talking about this. And to see uh, two people, one of them almost looking exactly like uh, this person, uh, Pam Anderson, that's going to be something to see. And and seeing Sebastian Stan with his acting chops, man, I think he's an excellent actor and I want to see more of what he's going to pull off with this. This could be an Emmy performance. Oh, wow. Did not see that coming. (laughs) Not on my list. Never (laughs) crossed my mind, but all right. All right. Maybe he'll go from that to finally being Luke Skywalker. Yeah, I know, right? (laughs) Uh, So my number nine actually is House of the Dragon. The only thing I'll add to your comments here is... um, Matt Smith, actually, you know, this is a guy who has never really broken into the cinema side of things, but as a TV actor, whether it's Doctor Who, whether it's his run on the crown as Prince Philip, he's a good lead. Like, if you're going to lead with him as an anchor in your TV show cast, you're, that's a, you're already kind of one step ahead. Look, I think, I think House Targaryen is also probably, of the ones you could have chosen, is probably the most interesting to explore history with. Uh, given the ties to the dragon um, and, and so forth. So, yeah, no, I think you give, you certainly give the, f- and it's also interesting because I don't think this was the, f- remember, this was not the first idea for the spinoff that they had, right? They kind of went, they they shot a pilot for something else, canceled it, and then settled on this and George Martin got involved, George R. R. Martin got involved writing for this. So, yeah, I think I think it it definitely from an anticipation perspective, given the credibility that Game of Thrones, at least for the first seven, you know, at least for everything but the final season, had built up. You kind of have to check it out. I mean, I kind of was not yeah. the most diehard fan, but like I feel like there were points in the show where I was riveted. And uh, this is a show where at least you know, certainly unless it's really bad in the first couple episodes, I, mean, I will be you know front center to see it kind of every every week when it comes out. So that's my number. The last time I used that word riveting was watching uh, that 30 for 30 Made in America OJ. I couldn't take my eyes off the screen, man. That was riveting to me. That's a good doc. My number eight, Ozarks. 
Yeah, you like to see. I don't watch this show, but yeah, go ahead. I know you like this. Uh, no, Ozarks to me, man, is seeing Jason Bateman in a new light. He's always been, his comedic timing is, is just amazing to me. I laugh at anything that he's in where he's being, when he's being called upon to be funny. And what was, I think, was it, what, what was, where did he first start out? Not, it wasn't Family Ties. It was. No, that was Justine Bateman was on Family Ties. Yeah, not Jason. Yeah, yeah. But where was Jason Bateman at? I His think, original show? I don't remember. Yeah. Damn, I got to fig- figure that out. But ever since then, and then Teen Wolf 2, and I love them and everything. Um, and but this this Ozark show just presents a different side of him and his acting ability and uh, and just the performances in that show and the situations that they sort of it reminds me it gives me that sort of same feeling as Breaking Bad you know what's gonna happen next situation so I really like the show and I and this is the final season obviously and so this definitely had to make my list. Interesting. Yeah. Fine. Speaking of Breaking Bad, right? Better Call Saul also final season this year. So ah. not, not on my list, but I think they're wrapping that up. It's, that turned out to be a worthy, worthy sequel. Oh, so my number eight is actually The Witcher season three. I actually double checked and confirmed we do, they are bringing it next year. It's coming in the fourth. It's coming in the fourth quarter of 2022 already. Um, mm-hmm. I have been very pleased with season two. I I don't want to spoil it because we haven't really talked about the end of it, but I just. I really liked, and we, I mentioned this to you offline before, I really like how they streamlined the progression of this season versus season yeah. one, which was a little more confusing, had a lot yes. more time jumps, and kind of yes. brought past, future, and present together. I like yeah. that this one actually was a little more, more like the game. It was a little more linear. They gave Cavill more to do, and I think he was more comfortable doing it. So I like that Geralt is more central to the dialogue and the storylines. Yeah. Um, and I like the creatures, like like the battle, the way they set it up was sort of like the weekly battles with the different monsters. I think they're yeah. interesting monsters and the action is really good. Um, they developed the female character quite well, kind of she's sort of like the Jedi in training. So yes. I really like where this show moved itself forward in season two. So that made me more excited to come back to see if they can level up again in, in, in season three. So that's, that's my number eight. Number eight is, is The Witch. I didn't know it was coming out this year, but it seemed like they, either, were... but it, they took a longer gap, one to two, but I confirmed they actually are ready to go 2022. Okay. Um, number seven is Atlanta. Oh, okay. Um, I remember that this was coming back, but that's a good call. Yeah, yeah Atlanta, man, is just a, is just. Every episode is something interesting and new that you learn, and uh, it's just very well done and very well written. The 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 performances of each actor are just uh, fantastic, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that 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 show again. I don't know if this is, I don't think this is the final season, but um, I don't no, know. That, no, there's no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that hasn't been said. So this is not the final season, but. You know, they do take a while to come up with these seasons. So I'm wondering if the, the next season after this one, will, will it be its last? Because I know those guys are busy and um, it's, it's tough to get them together to do this. So, um, yeah, Atlanta is my number seven. Well, I think the, he has a deal where it's kind of like when he has an idea. Got it. He does, they, they shoot it and there's no time pressure on him to kind of to meet a deadline. So yeah. it's kind of as long as he wants it to be. It's sort of similar to Curb, right? Like Curb Your Enthusiasm, they've been cranking them out a little bit, but Larry David's always had the free reign to decide when the next Curb season drops. So like okay. they've had gaps of like years between seasons in, in that show. Uh, so I think Donald Glover's in the, in the same category. But yeah, no, you're right. He's actually one of the, the uh, one of the geniuses of TV these days. That's yeah. a good call. I think about that. Yeah, yeah I'm, I guess at this point, I'm fully into sort of our, our sweet spot genre. So my number seven is The Boys, season three. Uh, okay. I think this is, you know, this show was fresh and different and, you know, subverted the superhero genre when it first came on. I don't think it lost a step in season two. Um, they're adding sort of one of the CW veterans. I think Jensen Ackles is joining over for now that Supernatural's done. He's coming over to, to season three. Okay. Um, so yeah, no, I, that one's I believe is coming in June, and uh, very much looking forward to uh, Billy Butcher and company being back. Yeah, so, of course, Boy Season Three is is number seven. I, and again, if you, if you haven't found that show and you're 
you're okay with a little bit of violence and a little bit of gore. <laughs> There's some great stuff in that show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I have that a little bit higher on my list. Um, okay. But um, my number six is I'm wondering what we're gonna where we're gonna meet in the same place. Uh, <laughs> Umbrella Academy. But yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, not on the list. Yeah, yeah. Um, Umbrella Academy. You just can't wait to see the performances of that kid. I don't know if he's a kid now. I don't know if he's gonna be bigger <laughs> because. <laughs> You're going to DH uh, him or something? Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be very interesting. And the situation that they're in now, they, they do a great job of landing the plane, Brian. What, have, what is our biggest complaint about Marvel is they, they have a tough time mm-hmm. landing the plane and, and finishing um, series. And Umbrella Academy has been two for two in terms of how they um, um, continue this storyline into the following season. So... Um, this situation that they're in is definitely something I'm going to look forward to because it's, it's, it's a situation. If you haven't seen it, I recommend that you do watch it. If you haven't, um, is very like awkward now. Um, um, and, and we'll get, have to wait and see how they figure this, this one out. Um, and I don't know if they've spoken about this being a last season, but, uh, it's going to be inter- interesting to see how they end this if they can continue because like what's next after all they've done all they've been through right well plus it's a Netflix show and as we know Netflix doesn't typically like to let its shows go super duper long so yeah. you be onto something there but yeah no I, I think the, the beauty of this show is the more we get content from the genre the more interesting this show becomes in the sense that it is different like if you if you caught up on Marvel and you caught up on DC and now you're watching the Disney plus shows, or maybe, you know, as you get into the HBO max shows, this is just different and you'll yeah. like it. Like the performances yeah, exactly. are good. The writing is good. The idea generation is good. And it's just like, it's got enough of a twist on everything superhero to where you're like, this is cool. Like I'm along for the ride, but I don't really know where we're headed. So no, I think it's, I think it's great. I can't wait for this. And they take their time, right? It's, it's been yeah. a couple of years since we, yeah. we, were, we were with these characters. And it was an ultimate cliffhanger at the end of season two. So, um, yeah, I can't I actually have it higher and, and uh, can't wait for it to be uh, be back in our lives in a couple months. So uh, my number six is Moon Knight. Wow, um, I have it really high. <laughs> I basically downgraded Miss Marvel, upgraded Moon Knight. That was sort of my spray here. I think now that we've, in, in fair, like now that we got a little bit of footage, Trailer was weird, but I think weird is good for this show a little bit. You know, I don't know how I feel about Oscar Isaac's crazy voice in the trailer. Um, yeah, I can't yeah, wait yeah. to see him and Ethan Hawke head to head. I love what this character could be. And the tone seems to be a little more gothic, a little more dark. And I think that's, but not like so blatantly Batman that you feel like you're watching Marvel Batman, yeah, which I think is exactly. key. You don't want that to yeah, be yeah. this. And so, yeah. I had that at number six, and I just like I said, you got two two great actors, you know, still kind of at the peak of their powers, going going head to head. So can't wait to see what what that what that yields. So yeah, that's my number six. Yeah, my number five is the boys. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the only thing I'll add to that is every time you watch this show, is is just a, it's just a, it's just fun. You have a good time watching this show. And if you, if you can get past the gore and violence, um, you'll enjoy this show. It's, it's just a fun time. The performances are great. The, you, every character, is, you remember pretty much all the characters because they're so different. They, and and he, any one of them can steal a scene. So um, The Boys is my number five. My number five is Andrew. Um who? Oh, okay. I, I didn't see that, but okay. That is confirmed for 2022. So I'm going to make my bold prediction is that my bold prediction is that from a critical review and start to finish quality perspective, this will be the best show of Disney Plus in 2022. Okay. Now it's not the, I don't have it as the highest anticipated show for 2022. But I am predicting this will be the best show when you see it start to finish. Why? Because I think, first off, Diego Luna as Cassian Andor is one of the more interesting characters that Star Wars universe has come up with in the post 
I don't know what you want to call it, the non-Skywalker saga era. He kind of has like that hint of Han Solo, but he's got like a hint of something else. And it's he plays it really well. And I think it lends itself in some ways to a more unconstrained story than what the other show on my list is going to have to deal with because he's not really tied to Skywalker this and Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this show is free to kind of go in other directions, similar to the way The Mandalorian was able to. And I think that's going to be a key positive. I also love, you know, so Tony Gilroy is actually behind this show and he became notable for basically doing like a rewrite and then ultimately cleaning up the directorial effort on Rogue One after it seemingly got away from, from Gareth Edwards. But Tony Gilroy is also one of the most famous screenwriters of you know, the last 50 years. He wrote all the Bourne movies. Like this guy's a heavy hitter. So that's why I say like, you basically have an Academy Award level writer slash, you know, director who's behind this series with like an Emmy level lead in the Star Wars universe with the freedom to do things we haven't seen before. I think this is going to be a great show. Yeah. Great show. All right. I, I did not, I didn't see it in any of the lists, so I, I didn't choose it. And I probably wouldn't have chosen it because again, I'm not into prequels too much, even though Mandalorian is, is you know, takes place before certain events in the Star Wars era. Um, but this was, this is even obviously before Rogue, Rogue One, right? So, well, it better be before Rogue One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, um, yeah, I didn't see it on any list, so I didn't even really think about it. Um, my number four is the, the Mandalorian. Okay. Are we sure uh, it's coming out? So I, I don't think it's coming out this year. That's the only thing, but that's fine. I, th- I think it's shooting it is. now, but I don't know they, if it's coming out in December. So I think they'll probably. Make, I, okay, that's fine. I, I Go think, ahead and speak. It's yeah, worth talking yeah. about. So yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, the first two seasons, everybody were just uh, talking about the Mandalorian, and especially if you haven't seen it, I won't spoil it. Um, but if you have, you already know the ending of that show was very um, one 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 for the books. You know, it was like <laughs> wow. You know, um, you had people crying about it. If you watch Star Wars Theory on YouTube, he has like millions of followers. That guy is is, is straight dedicated to the Star Wars genre, and um, there were people affected by seeing this. You know, and although they did a horrible job in doing what they did, there was a deep fake and they hired the guy that did the deep fake because it was way better than what they did. What, what Disney did. Are you, are you kidding me? So we know we no longer have that connection with Mandalorian and Grogu. So I want to see what ha- I'm, I'm, you know, I definitely want to see what happens now. And that's why, I think more more people, uh, or most people, are excited about this to see what's the next chapter in the Mandalorian's journey and where does it lead him to, what connections does he make, and do we get more Apollo Creed, Carl Weathers, Brian? That's my number four, Mandalorian. Yeah, no, I think I think I think you're right. I mean, whenever this show comes out, I think the two biggest questions are, yeah, like you said, the separation of Din Djarin from Grogu. Does this show lose a step automatically because Baby Yoda is not, you know, kind of riding side saddle for for all these episodes? I think you know the second question is so they the, the way they left the story, it seems like we're going to get like the siege of Mandalore, right? That's kind of like where we're headed. Like he's headed back to the home world with Bo, he'll probably reunite with Bo Katan at some point, and they'll kind of go up against whatever is popping on Mandalore, which I think would be a, an exciting twist for this series, which has kind of been very serial, right? We kind of go here, we go there, we go here, we yeah, go there. Yeah, yeah. So if we now move into a little bit more of like a war campaign style season, that would be pretty interesting. But then at the same time, it's like, are we just going to leave Luke and maybe, are they just gone to Jedi Academy? Yeah. We're not going to see Jedi Academy? Or is that something else to leave it open? I, I kind of want to see it, but I'm hesitant to have too much de-aged Skywalker in this series, I think it would actually take away from what they've built. So I don't know. I, I'm fascinated to see how they write this. So you're right. I mean, whenever it comes out, it's going to be out or near the top 
the list and we'll be mm -hmm. talking about it every week. So, uh, my number four, Secret Invasion. Uh, that's my top. Oh, snap. That's my, <laughs> don't tell me you forgot <laughs> that's coming this year. That's my top, that's my top MCU show for the year. Um, wow. So that, I did though, I double checked it too. I was like, is it coming this year in 2023? No, it's coming in 2022. So, uh, you know, Nick, wow. Nick, yeah, Nick Fury, obviously, and then you've got sort of the, the, the scrolls, and now you've got this just wacky, wild, good cast. Like Olivia Coleman jumps from the crown to secret invasion. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, you know, Amelia Clark is now in this show. Like, this show has everything and everyone, and obviously, it could be a prelude to something very critical to the MCU. Um, so I just think I can't see any way this show is bad, and I can see a lot of ways where this show could be great, and because of the acting depth, be different than what we've got. Because I feel like as far as cast go, this might be the deepest MCU show cast that we've seen so far. That's what I'm Wow, I didn't see that on any list either, man. I didn't see that on any If I would have known that, I Wow. Damn, it makes me look my... Damn, I'm, I look at, I'm looking well, at... Well, that's the thing. Like, TV's hard, though, because a lot of these are TBD. That's the thing. It's not like yeah, movies yeah. where they plant an actual weekend and you can say to people, here's where it's it's coming. But mm. you know, the sites I looked at, this is on the list for 2022, so... All right, my number three is... Uh, Moon Knight. All right. Okay. Top three. Uh, and it's all for the same, all the reasons that you mentioned, Brian. I don't really have too much to add to that, but uh, I'm certainly looking for as looking forward to Oscar Isaac's performance because it's not an easy one. Oh. Um, it's going to be very interesting. And I, and I think that has me very curious, um, excited for the action scenes and the fighting sequences. Um, but I don't know too much about it other than that. Um, so, yeah, that's my number three. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's it's weird. In the MCU, after we get this show, the two guys who will have the most requirements in terms of their range are going to be Jonathan Majors because of all the Kang variants and Oscar Isaac because of the nature of who Moon Knight is. If they're going to play yeah. it true to the comics, he has to play multiple personalities he has to assume all sorts of identities right similar to and you know, they, be, they, to they the have state. to be believable correct so it's hard like the, as you say the degree of difficulty is high but as an actor that should be your dream yeah. to play in the sandbox like that so these two guys the next couple of years you're going to be seeing a lot of them trying different things and so yeah. you know we hope it resonates but uh i hear you totally defensible to have it even higher uh, than i did season your top three uh, my top three is Obi Wan. Uh, my number three is Obi Wan. Um, that's the wow. so that's where I say like I think Andor could actually be a better show because it doesn't have the constraints of the old trilogy. But there's no question what the more anticipated show is. I'm not an angry. like Obi Wan <laughs> and Darth Vader getting back together on screen is obviously the in the Star Wars universe the number one thing you care about in 2022. Um, Deborah Chow, who did a lot of the directing um, on The Mandalorian, is running this show start to finish. And, you know, I will say this, my excitement for this show, I still have some reservations. My excitement for this show was definitely enhanced by Spider-Man No Way Home because I saw the return of characters I hadn't seen for years done incredibly well. And as I told you in our No Way Home review, it just, I left the theater thinking about Hayden Christensen and saying, could this be a legacy redefinition for him, who quite honestly wasn't, at least in Revenge of the Sith, really wasn't as bad as you remember. He was every bit as bad as you remember in Attack of the Clones. <laughs> he was not as bad as you remember at parts in Re Revenge of the Sith, which is a good Revenge movie. Sith was dope to me. So, like, I think if he's able to bring like an additional maturity to the role now, kind of 15 years later, and I just don't think Ewan McGregor is signing up for this check unless he thinks there's something here to tell. Yeah, look, I mean, who who in the Star Wars universe is not going to be tuning in, you know, the first second this episode, first episode is on the service. So that that's my number three. I hope and pray it's as good as we we want it to be. Um, but from an anticipation perspective, the build up to this, when you start seeing trailers and commercials, is going to get people talking. So that's my number three. 
I'll have more to add uh, to that in just a moment. <laughs> My number two is Peaky Blinders. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Peaky Blinders, man. Uh, I'm just, I guess the word would be enthralled with Thomas Shelby and his 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 mind um and what he feels i think he believes is necessary in order to keep moving forward or you know because I, I don't know if you've seen the show but if there, there's a there's a se sequence where he's um i guess urged to take a vacation and relax you know he's successful he's you know and during that time he's thinking he you know that ptsd is real Right. And so he has to keep moving. He has to keep thinking. He has to keep his mind occupied to 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 have him not think about those horrible uh, nightmares that he goes through and what he went through um, in, in uh, the French war. I believe uh, what wars what was it? Yeah, I, I'm not as familiar with the show. So, yeah. Yeah. The, the, so there's a particular war, obviously. And um, so, yeah, I'm just. Um, I just want to see, and, and apparently this season is supposed to be the final season, but it's not going to end there. They're doing a film to end it. So, Ooh. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's my number two, Peaky Blinders, man. If you haven't seen it, you got to check it out. And it's, it, and it's messed up, you know, um, one of the actresses there that she was fantastic and one of the reasons why I really like the show, um, she passed away. I forgot her name. Um, the, the, her, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. Um, but she was she was fantastic, and she was part of that group, the Peaky Blinders. I think she was sort of like the matriarch or the the head uh, female in that group, and um, she passed away. So I don't know how they're gonna write that in but uh peaky blinders is my number two man oh yeah you have a night you have a more you have more variety than i do that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> your tv watching uh, so umbrella academy is actually my number two uh, okay so my one the one thing that i find as an interesting footnote is like this is the one this is the one show that that the wife really likes that's in the genre it's always kind of a tough sell sometimes to get everyone yeah, on yeah, the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is the show that she actually really likes as well so like we look forward we've looked forward to watching the show as it's it's come on and so that's always interesting to me that it's it, this is a show that's touched audiences in a wider maybe a wider sense than the, than yeah. the traditional comic book fan but everything you said i think the other thing too is just they did such a good job of casting the members of the Academy that with the way they left and set up the new season, I'm simply fascinated to see how those actors and actresses deliver the alternate portrayal yeah. in this season. I think that's going to be one of the most fun aspects, not to mention, I guess we get a full dose of was it, it's number six, right? Who's, who's now back. Yes. Yes. yes six yes. is the one who, yeah. Uh, so then we get a full uh, character portrayal of that. So I think you put all yeah. that together, I think. And then um home i'm gonna get this home Tiori is uh the the sort of the father figure of the academy mm -hmm. and then the idea that you'll he's back but it's kind of the bizarro version of him uh, yeah that's yeah, also yeah. something i'm looking forward to seeing because he wasn't actually like it's not really like likable like you kind of get the, the he's a mentor but he's definitely like a tough yeah or even in season one and two so the idea that there's like a i don't know potentially nastier version of him i'm kind of interested to see but yeah i mean this show has its creativity has been impressive start to finish so that's why for me like when i saw it was confirmed for 2022 i'm like i can't i can't wait i can't wait yeah. he's like john crease <laughs> who, is, who is still dealing in cobra kai by the way that dude mark cove <laughs> yeah right it's like he's still so he didn't miss a in beat. that show yeah he didn't miss a beat yeah i didn't put um, cobra kai season five on the list that's a great <laughs> show but i didn't want to put season five did on. you finish it no we're about halfway through so. oh okay yeah me, me, me and my wife as well let me ask you this before we move on to uh um my number one mm -hmm. um does your wife 
refuse to watch like Hawkeye and all these other shows, or she watches it but really not interested in seeing it. Doesn't really watch it. I mean, she, okay. so she comes out for like the she's, she wants to see No Way Home. Um, like she sees Avengers, she sees the team up movies. Okay. Um, but like in the comic book suit, and then she she does like the Star Wars stuff. So like Mandalorian, okay. she she likes. Okay. Um, but like the Marvel stuff, not so much. Like got it. Try to get her into Loki and. You know, she's kind of whatever. So, but I'm really yeah. telling you, she likes me. She really okay. likes Yeah, my wife show. likes that too. She watches that, like, we binge it when it comes out. Exactly. So, yes. uh, yeah. My wife sort of watches Hawkeye's, like, yo, don't tell me you want to watch Hawkeye if you're on your phone, yo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you're going to watch it, watch it. Don't ask me some questions. Just watch it. Yeah, like but, she's, uh, she's, a, she's got a range. I mean, she, you know, she she likes Cobra Kai. She likes Money Heist. Like, so there's definitely shows we watch together. Oh, yeah, Money, Money Heist stuff. is fantastic. Yeah. Comic book stuff, she kind of leaves that to me unless it's, you know, something really big. Right? Or if I tell her, like, you've got to, you've got to see this. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I bet you she number... watches Secret Invasion. I bet you she watches Secret Invasion, though. Why? Why do you say that? Because of the cast. Okay. Because the range of the cast is different. It's a little bit different. It's a little more adult. It crosses yeah, over yeah. genres. I think she'll she might want to see that. I think my wife will watch that too because of Amelia Clark and some of, and then the cast. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. Um, my number one is Obi Wan. Yeah, go for it. Come on, man. Vader <laughs> is back. Hayden Christensen is back. Are you kidding me? Are we gonna? Is are we gonna get the same sound of Darth Vader that we used to used to see? And when he takes off the helmet, he sounds like Hayden Christensen. And what will he sound? Like? Hopefully, it doesn't sound like what he sounded like before. It <laughs> wouldn't. It, it just wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. So I'm hoping they get that situated. Um, and I want to see because remember, and we spoke about it in the past. In the first Star Wars, um, Vader says. I haven't felt this presence since what that yeah. has sort of been left in the open. And we thought it was that moment where we see, last see him in, in, in return of no return Avengers. of the Sith. Was that Avengers. Avengers. Yeah. So this could be the moment that we witnessed since the last time they met. So, and, and, and of course, what other characters are going to be introduced? There's just so much here to look forward to. Um, I've, you know, people are still not going to, you know, the, the, the Skywalker situation obviously is, is something that we're sort of over and we want to move on. Um, but still going to be intriguing to find out at what length did Obi-Wan have to try to conceal this secret. Um, and where Darth Vader meets him, and is Ashoka going to show? There's just so many things. This is the, for for everybody's going to watch this, man. Are you kidding me? Hayden Christensen is back, yo, and, and he. This is his opportunity. Like you know, I, this was me back then. Now you know what I'm saying. I'm not that guy anymore. Hopefully, it's that, and he. I, I just want him to win on this one. So, that is my number one. Yeah, I think it's completely defensible. I think also Disney's played this pretty smart with regard to, well, obviously, we're not a Skywalker was what it was, but at least on the TV shows, it really held back the force. It really held it back, right? So, like, season one of The Mandalorian, the only Jedi reference is the Darksaber at the very end of the season. Season two, they let it loose a little bit when the Shoka showed up, and then obviously Luke gets his sort of, you know, I'm going to take on, take on the world at the end. But I think it's like we're ready for a show where the lightsaber is the dominant weapon. Yeah, yeah. And like ready to see these guys just go up against each other. But this is a world where like this time period is a time period where like you still could run into other people who are more sensitive and can use a laser sword and stuff like that. So I think I think we're ready to kind of see that. And then you're right. I think. I think Rogue One helps the cause here a little bit because the last thing you saw Vader do was absolutely shred people mm -hmm. at the end of Rogue One in a way that you never really got to see him do in, in Lucas's hands. 
Right. And so I'm kind of feeling like to the extent Hayden Christensen has the helmet and the suit back on, you might see a little more of that. Mm-hmm. That he's going to be at his sort of peak quality, you know, level. Um, but you're right. He may not be so much machine that he can't still be Hayden Christensen for some scenes as well. So that'll be that'll be interesting. Um, and you're right. I just, I mean, the anticipation, I mean, when they... I don't know when they would drop the Super Bowl. Any chance we get a? I haven't heard anything about when they would drop yeah. footage. But like, ooh, when they put out a trailer for this, it's going to be. It's going to be. The crazy. Gonna break. It's gonna yeah, break. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, do you think Liam Neeson, Liam Neeson comes back as a force ghost? As a force ghost, I wouldn't rule it out. I wouldn't rule it out. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think here. Yoda. Probably has to be like a rigid, like a Yoda a, a part of the show, maybe at some point. He's, he's mm-hmm. alive at this, in this part of the show. Yeah. I think they're going to try to stay away, though, from original series characters. Like, I, like yeah, that's be, why I think Liam Neeson like, it sounds better. Yeah, like I would almost be like weirdly disappointed if like there was like a Han Solo cameo somewhere. Like, that wouldn't make any sense because they didn't meet the new hope, but like, any, or even like if Chewie was in it, I'd be like, yeah, you know. <laughs> I don't. I don't need it. I don't need it. Go, go, yeah, go! Yeah, give me other, yeah, other, yeah, other yeah. people. Yeah, other worlds, other people. Um, so, so yeah. No, I think we both had it in the top three. You have it at number one. But look, I'm partial to this. But I have Lord of the Rings at one. To me, wow. this is my number one. Um, okay. So it's been 20 years since the Fellowship of the Ring. You know, as I said, look, it's not every day that a studio bets its entire existence on one project. Uh, New Line Cinemas really, literally, was going to go bankrupt if this project didn't work 20 years ago, and Peter Jackson saved them mm-hmm. with three films that were incredible for the time. Did things that nobody thought was possible. Ultimately, you know, won an Academy Award for it in 2003. Yeah. But the thing I can't get away from, quite honestly, is so Amazon wants to be serious in this genre, right? So they bought this IP mm-hmm. and spent 500 million dollars on one season. That's 10 episodes. That's crazy. I'm like, I don't even know what that looks like, but I've got to find out. And I love, you know, I love the world. I love the universe. I've missed it. I'm ready to go back to it. Um, there's plenty of characters and, you know, races and um, storylines and battles that you can do. And I feel like, again, you're not constrained by the Hobbit or you're not constrained by the Baggins family. Like, it's all totally free. You paint with the palette and make a great show. They don't have like a... You know, they don't really have like a truly A-list, you know, lead. So this is really like we're going with the strength of the IP and the strength of the sets and the strength of the cinematography. But like to me, it's like a lot of it just comes down to, like I said, like this is Amazon's big splash into mm-hmm. they've kind of been they've been warming us up. They did like Wheel of Time, like they've been warming us up with these little things. And they've got the boys in comic book, they did a great job with that. Like, this is like where they're stepping to the plate and saying, we are at the table and we are at the table with the big boys with something that they don't have. And so to me, I'm, yeah, I can't wait for this. And uh, mm-hmm. it may be horrible. This is one that's like a high upside, high downside, to be quite honest, yeah. the way that like Obi-Wan's yeah. probably not, you know, the downside yeah. of Obi-Wan's probably pretty limited. Yeah, yeah. I gotta find out what $500 million of a Lord of the Rings looks <laughs> like, man, that's my number one. So yeah. that's it. Yeah, that is our top 10, man. And th- those are a hell of a top 10 uh, that we talked about. Um, let us know what's your top 10. We still haven't talked about uh, Boba Fett yet. Um, and there's just a lot to sort of uh, discuss regarding that. Uh, we're not going to get into it today, obviously. But uh, I just want to ask, how are you enjoying the show so far? I'm good with it. I liked episode two. Better than episode one. I would recommend to people, if you haven't had a chance to start it, consider yourself lucky. I think having episodes one and two to work with will help you. As I texted you, weird editing decision. (laughs) There was a perfect ending point for episode one in episode two that would have absolutely had people talking and they didn't do it. Yeah. And the show's taken a little bit of flack for that as a result, or taken a little bit of flack for episode one not being like, as people wanted it to be and i'm like yeah but they gave you that moment in episode two there's there's the the introduction of at least one character that is very important to the canon 
that will catch your attention the minute he walks on screen. And kind of is like, I didn't see that coming. And I don't know where this is headed, but it's wild. So you'll know. But uh, yeah, no, yeah, I'm very much enjoying the show. Um, not that I expected so much Tuscan Raider. Um, yeah. History and mythology to be. I think. I think. Guess. I think the end of the second episode will be the end of this. You think? I think so. Okay. Because they clearly set it up as sort of like they're the they're the indigenous they're the Native American people yeah, of yeah, yeah, Tatooine, yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. sort of the adopted son. He's like the Mowgli of the, of the tribe, <laughs> and you get sort of his motivations for why. I wasn't expecting that. I will say, if nothing else, they've surprised me with that. That being said, super cool action scene and set in episode two. I don't care oh, if it's yeah. flashback or not. That is shot yeah, pretty yeah. hard and different. It yes. looks it looks good. So. I'm amazing, amazing. I don't know, what, what about you? I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm having fun with the show. I'm definitely having fun. Um, I enjoyed episode one more than most. Um, and although we didn't get much of the present in that world, um, we sort of went to the past uh, uh, quite a bit in this one, and we ended there. And I think the reason for that, I'm, and I may be wrong, I think the reason for that may be um, because we'll, I think we're going to focus more now on the present than in the past. And the way they okay. ended, it seemed like he achieved a certain stature in that tribe that there's no need to really... I think he's learned the lessons that are, he's applied to his present. You know what I'm saying? To his, yeah, his current okay. uh, way of thinking and how he wants to go about things. So I don't think we'll see more of that. I think we'll get more of the present. I'm just looking forward to seeing uh, um, the next episode of this and where it leads, uh, because I think we need to sort of uh, um, continue on in the present rather than the past. I think we already, I, for me, already know um, where his mindset is at because of what he experienced. I agree. Like I said, the, the cameos in episode two put some very big pieces on the board. So we got to spend time there because... It's a big deal. You think? Let me ask you this before we we sign off. You think uh, we see Mace Windu? It's not impossible. I mean, not impossible. I mean, Sam Jackson would definitely do it. Oh yeah, he would definitely do it, especially with Secret Evasion coming. If they're like, hey, you know, can you can you shoot a day for us? I mean, there's been rumors that Han Solo's in this, which is yeah. Just, Insane. I don't understand. I can't see Harrison Ford doing that, but Amelia Clark obviously has been highly rumored. That does seem more likely than not, given that Crimson Dawn has already been referenced in the show. Um, so that seems like you know could be a decent possibility. But you're, you're clearly building to. I mean, like the way Episode Two kind of brought in the characters that it did, you're clearly building towards some bigger names in the Star Wars universe uh, that we haven't seen. So that was an impressive only... cameo. Oh yeah. yeah. That scene that was, was a... great. That right, scene that in the streets. A... It was that like was they, an impressive cameo. They had the oh. first where you're like, oh this is really cool. And then they had like just like the tracking shot over his shoulder and you're like, ooh, that looks like <laughs> and then they turn it around. I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. It's cool. It's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And he's a big and... deal in the comics now. That's the thing, like, for, for the modern Star Wars fan, in the last five, six years, like, he's been, like, a major, major character. So that is, like, you know, that is, like, putting Bo-Katan in, in your show and then having it be a, a real character. So, we'll see. How interesting would it be if they did a show on him, like, his own show? That would be crazy. How, how do you do it with a dude that can't speak English, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. You have to have somebody yeah. uh, like the witch or the dude that always there translating and talking with him and stuff. Anyway, that uh, the, the Book of Boba Fett is, is certainly a show that you have to watch and and, and it, don't get turned off by what, by what people say about the first episode because it, it, it doesn't do the show justice. Uh, there's a purpose and reason for that first episode that I that I, that I quite enjoyed, and I hopefully we, at some point, I guess when it, I guess we'll we should talk about it, Brian, and dedicate a whole show when it's done because it's only six episodes, right? Seven, seven, seven episodes. Um, I think we dedicate a show to that and and talk about the whole show rather than focus on the episode because then you know that that 
we have to commit to doing the show each week on it. And there's just too much going on. Don't want to get so, my fist though. That's what we <laughs> So yeah, that's our show for today. Let us know again what you uh think uh are your uh top ten shows for twenty twenty two. Please hit that like and subscribe button, that notification bell. Share with your friends and comment in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.